It is wonderful to be here with you all today. Thank you to Dr. Arun Jones, our ASM president, for the kind invitation to present this plenary talk. My presentation today is entitled, My Father Was a Wandering Aramean, Towards a Missiological Understanding of Hybridity in the Abrahamic Narrative. One of my earliest memories growing up in Australia is of sitting at my grandmother's kitchen table. Whenever I visited my grandparents' house, a vast and rotating array of my relatives could be found seated at the table. Aunties and uncles, grandparents, and later my little cousins. And we all sat together for hours at a time, eating and talking and talking and eating. And during these family gatherings, my grandfather could be found wandering in and out of the room, humming old Spanish ballads to himself, while my grandmother and aunties sat around the table yelling their stories across the table in Spanish and laughing as they drank tea or ate their way through a huge mountain of steamed prawns piled high on a piece of newspaper. I wasn't aware of it at the time, but I was born into an immigrant family. My grandparents and my mother and my uncle immigrated from Spain to Australia in 1961 in an effort to find economic relief from the lingering financial recession caused by the Spanish Civil War decades earlier. And my grandfather, as was the case with many Southern Europeans, was offered free transportation and guaranteed employment if he immigrated with his family to New South, New South Wales, Australia. And the promise of financial security secured his decision. And within a few months, my grandfather had begun his first job as an agricultural day labourer in the Illawarra region of New South Wales. Entering my grandparents' apartment in Australia was like being teleported back to 1960s Madrid. Their home was always filled with flamenco music and pre-recorded bullfights or soccer games being projected from the television and food, comida. So much Spanish food. Tortilla de patatas, churros y chocolate, paella, gambas, bacalao. Nevertheless, during my childhood, it didn't even register that my extended family were culturally distinct. I lived in the industrial town of Wollongong, located 50 miles south of Sydney on the east coast of Australia, with a population of approximately 300,000 people. And the city was filled with a mixture of Australians and immigrants from Great Britain, Denmark, Malta, Macedonia, Greece, Lebanon, Yugoslavia, Spain, Italy, and the Netherlands. Uh, at my home church alone, over 50 languages were spoken. And as such, my early childhood in Australia was effortlessly multicultural and multilingual and transnational. When I moved to the United States in 1990 with my parents and sister, additional multicultural layers were added to my upbringing. Living on Fuller Theological Seminary's campus in Pasadena, California, my best friends were from India and the Philippines, New Zealand and the Navajo Nation. Later, when I was called into cross-cultural ministry as an adult, I lived in the Netherlands, in Spain, Australia, and Papua New Guinea. And each country, whether I stayed for a few months or several years, I just threw myself into the community, endeavouring to learn the language and the culture and the customs of my new neighbours. If you were to ask me where I was from during these years, I would invariably have said that I didn't quite belong anywhere. When I was in Australia, I was considered Spanish. In Spain, I was considered American. And in the United States and Papua New Guinea, I was Australian. 
And while I lived in this strange limbo of existence, living between nations and languages and cultures, I discovered a richness of identity despite and because of this reality of not fully belonging. I was, and I continue to be today, an example of hybridity embodied. When Dr. Rune Jones invited me to share this plenary address at our ASM gathering, he asked me to talk about my personal story and how my own hybridity has impacted my theological interpretation of the theme within scripture. And as I prayerfully considered the relationship between my immigrant story and my intellectual pursuits, the interconnections became increasingly apparent. On a personal level, I realized that over the decades, I've been consistently drawn to research immigrant stories in scripture. In particular, this, the journeys of Hagar and Sarah and Abraham. And I related to their stories as one immigrant connects to the struggles of another. On a broader missiological level, I observed that hybridity was a consistent theme in scripture. And not only was hybridity or multiple belonging evident in Abraham's life, but also in the lives of numerous other prominent individuals, such as Joseph, Moses, Daniel, Ruth, Esther, and Jesus. And the prevalence of this biblical motif leads me today to ask the questions, is there a missiological significance to this biblical theme of hybridity? And if so, what missiological insights does this motif provide into the universal mission of God? Today in this presentation, I will highlight how the hybridity embedded within the person of Abraham reflects the sojourning nature of the people of God and foreshadows the internal transformations that take place within our identity, who we are, our mindset, how we think, and our behaviour, how we should act through the spirit of Christ. So first, I'm going to examine the social cultural hybridity reflected in the patriarch Abraham. And then second, I'm going to briefly expound upon the continued motif of Abraham's hybridity in scripture. And lastly, I'm going to suggest several missiological implications of the biblical motif as it relates to our understanding of God and ourselves and the global church. So first, the social cultural hybridity in Abraham. Abraham embodies the, the tension of living in between. In studying the life of Abraham, the focus is often on the theological importance of the patriarch's missional role as a vehicle of blessing to the nations, as expressed in Genesis 12, 1 to 3. However, Abraham's social cultural background is also significant. Embedded in the very identity of Abraham is a sense of hybridity, of multiple belonging, cultural identities wedded together, of the fusion that takes place when you are in between people groups, languages and lands. In the case of Abraham, this hybrid identity is magnified in the patriarch as the patriarch leaves his Mesopotamian birthplace and travels to a new land that never fully becomes his own. Throughout the rest of his life, Abraham remains a wandering Aramean and is considered a foreigner until his death. So Abraham's social cultural hybridity was multifaceted. 
uh, called by God from Upper Mesopotamia to the land of Canaan, Abraham left one corner of the world and entered another. This new region was linguistically, religiously, socioculturally, and politically distinct from his homeland. Even if Abraham had desired to assimilate to the cultural customs of his neighbours, he would have had been met with a dilemma of which culture should he adopt, that of the Canaanites, the Parasites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Philistines or the Egyptians, all people groups whom Abraham encountered and engaged with while sojourning through the land. And the biblical text indicates instead that while Abraham fought alongside and he made alliances with and he bought land from and he cut covenants with a variety of local residents, Abraham always remained a cultural outsider, a foreigner in the land. So while Abraham didn't fully adopt the customs of his new homeland, he was also no longer the same man that he was prior to his encounter with God in Genesis 12. In deciding to follow Yahweh, Abraham rejected the two primary social structures that had previously provided him and his household with spiritual and physical support. First, um, in choosing Yahweh, Abraham rejected his religious upbringing and any reliance that he may have had on the Sumerian deities who were said to promise their followers protection, fertility, um, prosperity. And second, Abraham left behind his social economic support system, his extended family, upon whom he would have relied on for physical, economic, social, emotional support. These two decisions and departures permanently transformed Abraham's life and person. In transforming, transferring his loyalty from the Sumerian religious sit, uh, system to Yahweh and in leaving his family, Abraham's day-to-day -day reality shifted. Abraham's religious and social allegiances permanently changed. Abraham was now dependent solely upon his God and upon the hospitality of the strangers that he met on his journeys. Uh, Abraham's identity as a foreigner, an alien in the land, is a detail that is reiterated throughout the Genesis narrative and one that is also later re-emphasised by the authors in the New Testament. The Genesis narrative repeatedly identifies Abram, the Hebrew, as a stranger and a foreigner and a temporary sojourner in the land. And the book of Hebrews later echoes this fact when the author writes in Hebrews 11, 9, by faith, Abraham made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him of the same promise. And echoes of this theme of sojourning can also be found in God's conversations with the people of Israel when God reminds them of their own history of residing as aliens in the land of Egypt. And as such, this seemingly minor detail about Abraham actually reflects a larger theological motif in the meta narrative of scripture. So I would like to focus a little bit now on Abram's hybridity in the meta narrative of scripture. And so as we do this, the question arises again <laughs> is the hybridity of Abraham missiologically significant or? Is it simply the biographical data of one person? And the answer, I believe, can be found in the fact that the biblical motif of hybridity continues outside of the Abrahamic narrative and is 
evident in the lives of many of the most prominent leaders and individuals in the history of Israel. Joseph, Moses, Daniel, Esther, Ruth, Jesus, among many others. And a quick survey of these individuals' lives accentuates the motif of multiple belonging. And again, it raises the question, is this coincidence or is this theologically significant? And as, as my time is limited today, I won't be providing a in-depth analysis of hybridity within these individuals' lives. Instead, I will highlight the social cultural hybridity of one key person, Abraham, as an example of the launching platform of this theme in scripture. So why did God choose the immigrant, Abraham? Why did God ask Abraham to leave his family, his people, to live as a nomadic stranger in a land that was not his own? In reflecting on the meta-narrative of scripture, a number of answers emerge. First, God chose a man from the nations to be a blessing to the nations. Second, God created an environment in which Abraham was able to and was invited to depend exclusively on God for all his needs. And third, God modelled the true nature of his chosen people in the person of Abraham, their forerunner, a person who was clothed in an earthly tent and who longed for his eternal home. And it's this last reason that I would like to draw your attention to today. God modelled the true nature of his chosen people in the person of Abraham, the immigrant, the foreigner, the outsider, the nomad. And just as the gospel message was foretold to Abraham, Galatians 3.8, so the sojourning nature of God's people is also embedded in the person and life of Abraham. Abraham reflects the pilgrim nature of God's people. In addition, Abraham also embodies an internal shift of identity that takes place within God's followers when they become new creations through Christ. When Abraham follows Yahweh, he begins a spiritual journey that forever changes his identity and that reorients his life towards God's eternal kingdom. And so while outwardly Abraham looked to be the same man, inwardly his allegiance, loyalty, trust, fidelity had shifted from his dependence upon his old support structures, both religious and familial, to a full and complete dependence upon God. And as such, Abraham exemplifies in his person the multifaceted spiritual reality that is evidenced in part through the nation of Israel and then later more fully in the early church that God's people are spiritual pilgrims on earth who are made into a new creation through through Christ and who were adopted into the covenant and as such become citizens of a new kingdom. So having discussed uh, the social cultural hybridity of Abraham and the continued motif of Abraham's hybridity in scripture, I now turn to the missiological implications of this motif. In the early 2000s, I had the opportunity to travel to Spain with my grandparents. And both of my grandparents came from large families. So our itinerary consisted of traveling around Spain, visiting family. 
my great grandmother who was still alive in Barcelona and my grandparents' siblings and their nieces and nephews. And during these visits, we would regularly find ourselves around my Spanish relatives' kitchen tables. And the familiar steamed prawns would make an appearance, as did paella, cocido, bacalao. And while the food and the language were all familiar, I was really surprised to observe that my grandparents were quite different from their siblings. While my grandparents had continued to surround themselves with Spanish food and language and news and sports in Australia, my grandparents had changed. In moving to Australia, they had diverged from the cultural trajectory of their siblings and their families in Spain. Were they Spanish? Yes, they were clearly still Spanish. Were they Australian? Yes, they were also Australian. However, they weren't like the Spaniards who had chosen to remain in Spain, and nor were they similar to the natural born Australians who had never lived abroad. My grandparents' social cultural identity had shifted. And during their extensive stay in a foreign land, their cultural makeup, their worldview orientation, their values and beliefs had been reoriented. They now embodied a new identity, the hybrid identity of an immigrant. In reflecting on my grandparents' hybridity, as well as that of Abraham, there are several insights that can be gleaned. In particular, their sense of hybridity affected their lives on multiple levels. It influenced who they were, their identity, how they thought, their mindset, and how they acted, their external behavior. In considering the missiological implications of Abraham's hybridity, I would like to expand upon these three categories and highlight what the motif of hybridity embedded in the person of Abraham reveals about our identity and mindset and external behavior as followers of Christ. So first, identity. In Abram's hybridity, our new identity in Christ is revealed. Hybridity in scripture is not simply a reflection of multiple belonging. It is a representation of a deeper transformation. You are not who you were. You are different. You are new. Like Abraham, upon encountering God, we embark upon a spiritual journey in which our worldview and our values and our beliefs are recalibrated. Upon accepting Christ as our saviour, we enter into the covenantal promises given to Abraham and become citizens of a new realm, the kingdom of God. We become a new creation. We are given a new identity in Christ. Second, mindset. Like Abraham as spiritual pilgrims, our mindset is transformed. In Abraham's life story, we observe a progressive shift within the patriarch away from a dependence upon earthly security and towards a dependence upon divine relationship. And likewise, in following Christ, our physical and spiritual allegiances permanently change. Our focus expands beyond our earthly surroundings and it fixes on the eternal. Finally, behavior. As reflected in the Abrahamic narrative, due to our new mindset and identity in Christ, our behavior changes. As Abraham journeys with God, his actions increasingly align with the will and guidance of God. While Abraham 
initially acts independently from God. If you remember Abraham's deception of the Egyptian Pharaoh in Genesis 12, over time, the patriarch's behavior falls into step with God. And the climax of Abraham's faith and obedience occurs towards the end of his life in Genesis 22, when Abraham obeys God's command and offers his son Isaac to God as a sacrifice. And this monumental act of obedience and trusting God's covenantal promises stands in stark contrast with Abraham's lack of faith at the beginning of the narrative. It is safe to say that Abraham is not the same man that he was when he was called by God in Haran. We should not be the same people that we were when we were first called by God to follow Christ as our Lord and Saviour. In conclusion, the hybridity embedded within the person of Abraham reflects the missiological reality that we, the followers of Christ, are a pilgrim people whose identity and mindset and behaviour are meant to be in alignment with the kingdom of Christ. Like my grandparents, myself and Abraham, we are all immigrants, spiritual pilgrims following the living God. And as such, we're not meant to be stagnant or fixated solely on the things of this world. Instead, we are invited to be transformed, heart, soul, mind, through the power of the Holy Spirit while journeying with Christ. Thank you for joining me today as I've shared a little bit about this motif of hybridity in the narrative of Abraham. It is my prayer that as you have listened to this presentation, the Holy Spirit has stirred something within you, has rustled up some new questions, provided some new answers. And I look forward to seeing you all during our conversation following this presentation. Thank you so much for listening.